There are a lot of artists around the world who want to be the next big artist in Afrobeat, and so this has caused a massive jump towards the genre, especially when it comes to production. Now, because of this, new artists are choosing to lease their beats because this is the easiest way that a lot of you all can get started very quickly. And then on the flip side, producers don't want to sell the rights to beats that are performing well or leasing well. So eventually down the road, as you can tell with typical leasing situations, artists will want to own the rights at some point. And with producers not actually budging in this particular situation, this does cause some frustration. The question is, what is the gain that the producer is really making in this genre? And that's what we got to talk about coming up right here on the Music Money Makeover Show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham, and yes, this is the dark side to how music producers are getting rich in the Afrobeat genre. Now, music producers can make a pretty hefty penny leasing beats, but in this genre specifically, there's a few key factors that would allow them to jump ahead quite quicker than let's say other genres. So we're gonna dig deeper into that on today's episode. Now, because I understand why they won't sell and I understand the potential upside that they're making, I wanna say to my producers, I feel you in your positioning. So this is not saying that, all producers are wrong for what they're doing in the genre. Some of you might not even know, but I'm gonna bring this to the light, so check it out. Okay, so to understand how we got here, what you have to do is you have to understand the economy of a beat leaser. And you can call this, this is law for online beat makers and beat leasers. So this is how, this is the entire system of how they're gonna make their money in a nutshell. Goal number one is they wanna send all of their beats through content ID systems before distribution or at the point of distribution. This is what is happening. Goal number two is they wanna register their master and composition for copyright just in case people wanna get out here and infringe on their rights and they wanna steal things from them or just say not pay them for the beat and then the beat rises and they have reason to sue now. And then goal number three is to create audio videos with their beats for like social media and stuff for the type beats and stuff and this is outside of the performance video this is just for strictly cataloging their compositions so that people can come and purchase them later it's like putting your stuff in a library okay just a public library goal number four is to never sell the exclusive rights that's law and then goal number five is to release the tracks as a compilation or instrumental albums seasonally, if you know they do well, that's an optional one, but these are the five pillars of the economy of the beat maker. Otherwise, they wouldn't really be leasing these beats. So it is on them to make money and they have every right to make the money the way they make it. But let me, let me begin to show you how the upside works for a music producer in the Afrobeat genre and then how it doesn't work so much so in the beginning for an artist in the genre. So your lost revenue, and I'm talking to, to you artists, is the platforms here. The Afrobeat is consumed all over the world and listeners stream across many platforms. And there are three platforms that hold the keys to many new artists, Cashflow. And YouTube, AudioMac, and Boomplay are the main culprits. YouTube, Audio Mac and Boomplay. You'll find that later I'll call these a specific type of platform. Now with YouTube being the number one listening outlet across borders, it really puts a damper on revenue for new artists to get exposure in developing streaming markets like West Africa, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. Okay, you can also add other developing nations to this list as well. So I wanna read that sentence again so you really understand it. With YouTube being the number one listening outlet across borders, it really puts a damper on revenue for the new artists to get exposure, that's our key word too, in developing streaming markets like West Africa, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. Now, let's continue. Here we go. YouTube delivers its money to whoever owns the content ID registration. Now, because you as the purchaser of the lease do not have any rights to the content ID, you cannot claim that revenue. This is typical beat lease knowledge. This is standard. This has been going on for a while. Let's continue further. This causes even more issues when YouTube recognizes that beat as the producers and hundreds of buyers try to register the same beat as their song at their PROs. Now, YouTube's content management system, YouTube CMS, more than likely will select the producer's PRO account for the original registration to get the royalties from your song because you don't own the original content ID. Just like that, 
we just stacked it up. So let's say, and it doesn't matter. Like you can go in and say, this was my song at BMI or ASCAP or CSAC or GMR or whatever. You can do that all day. But on YouTube, it doesn't matter because the content ID belongs to the producer. So when YouTube begins to pay the performance rights to that beat, they're gonna pay it out to whoever owns the content ID, which is the producer. So what happens is the performance royalty for that just got shipped out to the PRO account of the producer, doubling the money because they couldn't sell you the master rights and they also can't give you the performance rights even though you're gonna register for it. This is any beat lease situation. As we go further in today's video, it gets even more sensitive. Now, what does this leave you with? First, you're left with a longer window to make money from your initial projects. We're in Afrobeat. We're not talking about standard beat leasing. This is gonna happen anyway in standard beat leasing, but we're in Afrobeat. Second, you are left to make money on non-discovery platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, etc. Earlier in the show, we, we, we said YouTube, Audio Mac, and Boomplay. These are our keyword discovery platforms. But now you're legally, due to your beat lease agreement from BeatStars or Airbit or whatever, you're legally left to make money on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, etc. But this isn't a discovery platform. I'll continue more on that later. You may say, oh, that's cool, but you must remember for developing countries or lower income countries where the genre's origin is held, those services are not an option. Even in America, if you were being discovered, YouTube is still the place to go if listeners want to test out your music. And this goes for Afrobeat, Dembo, this goes for reggaeton, all of that stuff that is not Americanized, even though it plays over here in America. All of that stuff that's not Americanized or in more of the established countries, so long as this world is established how it is now, it just, it's, it's discovered on YouTube because it's free. But YouTube got that bag, even though they pay less than all the other people, it's just that they accumulate more stuff over at YouTube. You get what I'm saying? So because of that, you end up losing your ad revenue because guess what? The song ain't yours. So the ad revenue has to go back to that who owns the content ID. YouTube has to stream the song in the first place, so they have to pay the master, mechanical, and performance royalties, which, oh, by the way, is gonna go back to the producers. And you see what I'm saying? You see how this stacks up now? So not only does the producer get the ad revenue, but they get all of the typical song revenue as well, strictly from YouTube. So this really allows a music producer who works in the beat lease world to kick back. Now, they look just like this one right here sitting on cash, especially if they know what they're doing. How are they getting rich? One, the number one discovery and consumption platform is YouTube, like I said, but two, multiply the beat times the amount sold. So it's not just you. Let's say if your rendition does well, but he's got a thousand other renditions, which maybe a hundred people put it out. So maybe out of every 10, one puts it out, he's still getting money. He or she's still getting money. You see what I'm saying? You're never gonna see the amount of beats that they sold. So three, you can't even count the number of beats made and and up for at least in this genre. But I'm just strictly talking about the producer. The majority of this method works with all beat leases, it doesn't matter the genre. But I'm just saying when a genre buckles down on a few listening platforms where the money is made and YouTube is the top player, it allows the artist to not have a fighting chance on revenue if they're leasing beats, not if they're getting originals. So should I still lease beats? Here's the answer. If your goal is to create exposure and not make money in the short run, yes, if you don't care about the money, in the short run, you need the exposure, cool, do it. If losing money from YouTube is going to hurt your bottom line, meaning you need, I need all my money from YouTube right now, don't do it. But if you don't care about the money in the beginning, because let's say you you know you're gonna get other types of money from, let's say just the attention and leveraging the attention to get money, cool. But like I said, if, if you need that YouTube money and it's gonna hurt your bottom line, find somebody to make the beats for you. Now, you mentioned Audio Mac and Boomplay. What do they have to do with this? Audio Mac, like I was saying earlier, is a smaller discovery platform, much like SoundCloud. Its revenue is limited to ad-supported streaming revenues for the masters, performance, and mechanical royalties. Lastly, Boomplay is a more affordable streaming option for Western Africa, though its pay structure is similar to the majors. Here we go, here's our key factor. The subscriber base is not nearly as big as YouTube. 
So your discovery options are limited if you are not from that region. So people are going to go to Audiomac. OK, this is this is really going to be your outlet to actually make some money from Audiomac via the performance royalty. All right. And they pay mechanicals too. they pay mechanicals at Audiomac. And, and then they and then the rest of the master's uh, master revenue comes from the ad revenue from the platform. So if it's ad based, it's not going to be a lot of money. So that's why everybody wants to be on YouTube because of the severe amount of cash you can make from it. Now, here's what I suggest. Work with producers that you find online or locally to craft beats for you in this genre. This will require a bit more networking on your end up front, but it will save you when promoting your records later. Ownership is everything. Besides, you're going to need that ownership when the record takes off. So hopefully your foundation is secure before you start. The reason why we need a secure foundation is because if we're gonna own something, it's got to be owned by something, especially if we're planning to scale our business and you can't even scale your business without a platform. So what can we use to do that? I've created something called the 60 day record label course to help you build your foundation flawlessly from LLCs to bank accounts to collecting your international and your domestic publishing and record royalties directly to your pocket, skipping the middleman, saving 15 percent. And within this course, I've given you the game on how it actually works via contract and walking you through how the contract actually runs the music industry so you know how to play this game and you're not just starting, you know, playing Monopoly with rules that somebody drew with crayon on a piece of paper, right? You got to understand how this game works so you know how to maneuver through it. And it's done via contract. I got you covered. All the stuff you see on the right hand side, right down below, is included. Please click the link below to find out more. It will be well worth your time. And I know you got questions. I got answers. Book a call at any time. I'm open. All right. Let's develop your strategy so you can win either before you start the course or after you start the course. Doesn't make a difference to me, but most of your questions will be within that course. I promise you. Now, grab the free stuff below if this is your first time watching. But ultimately, if you're going to do this, you need to go for ownership because this gives you increased revenue from your music projects, which is what we need. And we're going to need this down the line. Ownership and control over your masters and content. I promise you we're going to need this ownership, especially when we break it off into other things. And you'll learn that in the 60 day record label course, how we can do that. Greater exposure and discovery opportunities, ability to expand your fan base and reach new listeners, enhance networking and collaboration opportunities with producers, increase confidence and satisfaction in your music, in your music career. Now, if you don't go for ownership right now, it's not terribly bad, but it's going to hurt if you pour a lot of money into something you don't own. But limited revenue potential from music projects initially will happen if you're going for the easy option. And sometimes the easy option is all we got because it's going to at least get us started. But understand that limited revenue potential from music projects will happen initially. The lack of ownership and control over your masters and content is just going to be what it is. And you may limit exposure and discovery opportunities. I'm not saying you will. I'm just saying you may. There is a lot more downside the higher up you go using stuff that's not yours. So you're going to want to buy these guys out as fast as you can, or you're going to want to start with ownership in the beginning. That's it. So if you're a music producer, my hat's off to you. Go make your money. If you're an artist, I want you to be mindful. Go watch this video again and understand what's really happening. All right, music money makers, here's where you should be. Ultimately, Here's what I suggest, especially if you're a really talented artist and you really want to make some money here. I highly suggest you work with producers that will allow you to own the rights. So find somebody locally that you can work with or find somebody through Sound Better or just somebody who will let you own the rights so that you can grow and scale your um, your music endeavors in your music career. All right, music money makers, if you make music, you should always make money. Log on to musicmoneymakeover.com, download the free stuff below, Please, please, please jump into the 60 day record label because it is the fall. So you may have some issues with new registrations. OK, but you're going to see there's going to be a very, very, very great benefit for you. Book a call on musicmoneymakeover.com and I will see you next time. Peace.